Hey folks, Ron Gamgee here. I just want to briefly announce that the Quick and Dirty RPG system is now available on DriveThruRPG for $4.99. That's almost a 40% price reduction from its original retail price of $8, which makes it easier for you to get a copy of My Labor of Love to the RPG hobby in your preferred devices. Also, don't forget to grab a copy of the Quick and Dirty character sheets and other profiles at a price of pay what you want. The links to both products are in the description. Now, onto the video. Greetings, folks. This is Ronald Scanji, and welcome to Quick and Dirty Roleplaying. In this video, I'll talk about the tabletop roleplaying games that I got inspiration from when I made the Quick and Dirty RPG system. You know, that game that I put up that promo for after the intro, but before the main video. Before I start, note that the order from which I present these games don't represent a hierarchy of importance or influence. It's more like the order in which they came to mind when I was writing down my sources of inspiration at the end of the Quick and Dirty RPG system document. With that being said, the games that served as my sources of inspiration are as follows. Apocalypse World by D. Vincent Baker. This game is the wellspring for a host of tabletop role-playing games to follow that have brought the synthesis of games, excuse me, of game mechanics and narrative engagement to the forefront, especially with my first peripheral exposure via Dungeon World by Sage Latora and Adam Coble. Sentinel Comics RPG from Greater Than Games LLC. This is the game that I derived the dice mechanic from and the well-being trait that is part of every character's dice pool. While brilliant in its game design, I opted to adapt a simplified version of their dice mechanics for the sake of speed and flexibility. Mythic GM Emulator by Tana Pigeon. This is my first exposure to the concept of GM emulation, and it's a fantastic resource for helping GMs come up with on-the-fly content relatively quickly and with minimal prep. Iron Sworn by Sean Tompkin. This game synthesized the Powered by the Apocalypse engine and GM emulation into something very special and distinct. Iron Sworn also solidified a method of making Powered by the Apocalypse style characters without playbooks. That would be character classes for those not in the know. Fate Accelerated from Evil Hat Productions LLC. The use of approaches rather than attributes or skills is a great way of getting the players to think about how they tackle challenges and it ports very well to just about any setting. Fragged Empire from Design Ministries. This game expanded my boundaries on what could be considered a tool, so I turned it into one of the core dice pool traits due to its flexibility and universal applicability. Blades in the Dark by John Harper. This is where I was exposed to taking situational risk assessment, referred to as fictional positioning, when determining the outcomes of character actions. It's also what brought the concept of scale to the forefront for me. Crescendo of Violence by Alan Barr. This game introduces two new approaches that I've incorporated into Quick and Dirty, but rewarded so as to not blatantly rip off of their work. Hearts of Wulin by Lowell Francis and Joyce Ching. This game brought the piece that was absent in Powered by the Apocalypse games before it. A procedure to see how badly you lose against overwhelming odds, and the concept of taking steps to have a fighting chance, all without applying modifiers to the dice roll. Burning Wheel by Luke Crane. Among many other things, this system really emphasizes determining your intentions and methods before making your dice roll, as well as making the results of those dice rolls stick in the narrative. 
Uh, give me one moment. I forgot to pull out this other game from the... the... Uh, not that one. They're somewhere easily accessible, but it's Worlds in Peril from Sam Joko Publishing. This is the first Powered by the Apocalypse game that I've come across that's demonstrated how to create superpowered characters without having a massive power list or using a point by system, all without worrying about game balance. Bounty Hunter Tabletop Role Playing uh, TCRPG by Guy Sklanders for the YouTube channel How to Be a Great GM. This one I think I do have a physical copy of. Ah, here we go. And... Okay, so... Worlds in Peril. And... Bounty Hunter TTRPG. So, this is a great diceless game that provided part of the inspiration for the character profile. Next we have Quest from the Adventure Guild, LLC. This game inspired me to write in a style that was not traditionally how tabletop role-playing game books were written. It's also where I was partly inspired by the character profile and where I derived the setting profile. Dune, Adventures in the Imperium from Modifius. Uh, it's from this game where I derived the idea of using different areas of the body as zones in one-on-one -on -one duels. The Resistance Toolbox by Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor. This is where I derived the not-so-exhaustive list of special abilities, from, excuse me, which are a great source for creating a wide variety of character abilities for more freeform narrative focus tabletop role-playing games. City of Mists tabletop role-playing game from Son of Oak Game Studio. Besides being a fantastic tabletop role-playing game, this is where I learned the concept of postponing the outcomes of certain actions until dramatically appro appropriate. And last but certainly not least, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition from TSR. This is my first introduction to the tabletop role-playing game hobby and where I started by doing things wrong. This is also where I found myself dissatisfied with its rules and wanted to tinker around with it to have it make more sense. This led to spending decades of homebrewing and exploring what other tabletop role-playing games are out there and how they work. So it's from the mechanics and my experiences from these games that has led me to develop the quick and dirty RPG system in its current form. A system that cuts through the clutter so that the group can get right to the exciting stuff with whatever setting they came up they come up with in a collaborative manner, but in a collaborative manner with minimal prep on the part of the GM. If you like or dislike anything in this video, please give it a like or dislike and leave a comment, keeping it respectful and relevant. Subscribe if you want to support my channel, and if you really want to support my endeavors, head over to my Patreon and become a member. The link is in the description. Until then, folks, take care and play to find out what happens.